Hello, this is RSC Marin. I'm an associate professor at the Medical University of South Carolina. I'm also the director of the coronary CTO program. Today, I will be talking about left main PCI and bifurcation PCI via transradial access. I do not have any disclosures relevant to this talk. So what do we have on the agenda today is, why should we use transradial access for unprotected left main PCI? We will also go over the basic equipment needed for left main and bifurcation PCI. Next, we will discuss PCI techniques for left main osteal and mid vessel lesions. And finally, we'll discuss PCI techniques for the left main bifurcation lesions. We will also go through some case examples at the end. Let's start with what the trials have told us already. The trials have said that radial and femoral approaches are both safe and effective. Transradial axis has a lower rate of vascular complications, such as decreased axis site bleeding and occurrence of pseudoaneurysms. Left main PCI with transradial axis was associated with comparable early and late clinical outcomes as compared to transfemoral axis. The references are below for you to look at your leisure time. During unprotected left main PCI, there are a few things we should remember. These patients are not surgical candidates, and they are not surgical candidates because of their coexisting comorbidities. These patients often need hemodynamic support for the PCI, and radial axis can be used for the PCI part of the procedure, and the femoral axis can be used for mechanical circulatory support. There are a few crucial steps. Number one being analyzing the angiogram. Anatomy dictates the strategy, and therefore analyzing the angiogram and planning the strategy is key. Next, use of intravascular imaging, whether be it intravascular ultrasound or OCT is essential. Finally, there has to be a plan B if plan A fails. So analyzing the angiogram and coming up with plan A and plan B are extremely crucial for unprotected left main PCI. For a standard osteal or mid vessel lesion, the approach can be a six French right radial axis. The sheath is usually the tapered hydrophilic sheath. The hydrophilic coating helps um, has improved patient comfort. Do not forget the radial cocktail. The guide can be whatever guide you are most comfortable with. This would not be a time to experiment with new guides, especially when dealing with osteal or mid vessel unprotected left main lesions. Do not use guides with side holes because they can give a false sense of security of not dampening, but when the pressures are actually dampened, and this can lead to significant adverse outcomes to the patient. So the goal of this entire procedure is going to be keeping it simple, in and out and be done. So use your standard left coronary guide, use your regular workhorse wire, and place the wire preferably in the LAD or in the circumflex. Pre-dilate if needed, followed by use of intravascular imaging. The intravascular imaging is going to describe to us the uh, composition of the lesion, whether it is fibrofatty or fibrocalcific plaque. And if it is fibrocalcific, do we need to do further plaque modifications? Then lesion length and adequately size the stent. Stent deployment and do not allow for long inflation times. Instead, inflate and quickly deflate, followed by post dilation. As I mentioned before, keep the balloon inflation times short. Intravascular imaging to make sure there is excellent stent apposition and expansion without any edge dissection, and that's it, you're done. If, if all these steps go quickly without any complications, you could even consider same day discharge for this unprotected left main osteal or mid vessel PCI via transradial axis. Now let's uh, go to a case. 
This is a 49-year-old female with history of hypertension, uncontrolled diabetes with a hemoglobin A1C of 13, history of hemorrhagic stroke about a year ago, and end-stage renal disease who came with a non-ST elevation MI. The diagnostic angiogram demonstrated severe osteal left main lesion, followed with a moderate mid-LAD stenosis and a moderate focal RC mid-vessel stenosis. She was considered to be a high-risk surgical candidate given a history of uncontrolled diabetes and stroke along with the end-stage renal disease. She had a normal ejection fraction of 65% and the decision was made to proceed with PCI. Here are our angiograms and you can see uh, the first angiogram shows the osteo lesion which is really tight. In picture number B, you can see that the guide had to be unseated because of intense dampening of pressure. And in our picture number three, again, it's after we wired the LAD, the guide could not be seated adequately because of the osteal lesion. The lesion was quickly pre-dilated with a compliant balloon, followed by balloon angioplasty. We had excellent results, which you can see in um, picture E. Intravascular ultrasound demonstrated fibrofatty plaque and a stent, a 4012 drug eluting stent was deployed. One of the key points during stent deployment is to have the patient hold his or her breath to avoid respiration-induced positional changes of the guide. There have been several times where the entire stent was deployed outside the blood vessel because the patient took a deep inspiration right at that time. So please remember to have the patient hold his breath and not give extra excessive sedation at that time. And therefore, the patient is able to follow commands during this most important step. So this is the final angiogram and you can see excellent stent expansion. And this procedure was extremely uncomplicated. Every step followed uh, seamlessly. Patient was discharged the same day. Moving on to distal left main lesion. Please be mindful of the sheet size while planning the PCI strategy. As you all know, the distal left main lesions are a whole different animal. And there's increased chances for bifurcation strategies such as Coulart, TAP, DK crush, etc. You can use a six, seven French sheets with seven French guides or a seven or eight French sheetless guides via the transradial axis. The six, seven French sheets have a outer diameter, which is one French smaller than the inner diameter. Therefore, the arteriotomy size is a six French arteriotomy, but the sheet accommodates a seven French or a one French higher guide. And that's the same way with the sheetless guides also. So moving on to axis and bifurcation strategies. Bifurcation strategies that can be easily done with six French axis will be Coulart, DK crush, TAP. Axis, at least seven French guides are needed for double stent strategies such as simultaneous kissing stents, V stents, and crush stents. Once again, anatomy dictates the strategy, and while analyzing the pre-procedure angiogram, we will have to have a clear-cut strategy in mind, which will help us then choose the axis uh, site and the sheet size. Careful pre-procedure planning and bailout options should also be thought out during left main unprotected PCI, especially with the distal bifurcation lesions. Let's move on to our next case. This is an 81-year-old male with a non-STEMI. Past medical history is significant for COPD, oxygen dependence, and hypertension. The diagnostic angiogram showed osteal LAD stenosis moderate to severe circumflex stenosis and a RCA CTO. The syntax one score was 28. So the PCI mortality was 36%. Cabbage mortality was 
But however, the syntax two four year mortality, the score for PCI was 39.5 with a mortality of 14.5% over four years. And the syntax two score for cabbage was 56.1% with a four year mortality of 46.8% for bypass surgery. So the initial angiogram, as you can see, demonstrates the osteal LAD lesion. It is a Medina 010 bifurcation lesion. We chose to go with a 6-7 French radial sheath and a 7 French XP LAD guide. Our strategy was single stent to the left main LAD with provisional stenting of the circumflex. This basically shows us wiring both uh, circumflex and LAD arteries with our workhouse wires. This basically shows pre-dilation of the left main and the LAD with compliant balloons. And after intravascular imaging, a 40 by 20 drug eluting stent was placed in the left main to uh, LAD. The angiographic results were excellent. There is no compromise of the ostium of the circumflex. Now our plan was to recross into the circumflex and do a final kiss. Unfortunately, it was not easy for us to cross right away. We tried to do a wire swap, but that did not work. So a new Miracle Brothers 3 grams was passed into the circumflex artery and the stent, left main stent was dilated serially with a 151015 balloon, followed by a final simultaneous kissing balloon angioplasty with 2.5 NC balloons. And this is our final angiographic result. There is excellent expansion of the left main stent. There is no compromise of the circumflex branch. Our next case is a left main bifurcation when plan A fails. This is a 66 year old male who was morbidly obese. He status quo cardiac transplantation with an osteal circumflex disease. As you can see in the angiogram, uh, he is a 001 Medina classification. Our initial strategy was wire in the circumflex, leave the LAD alone, intravascular imaging, stent, IVIS, and out. But so unfortunately, it was extremely difficult to wire the circumflex. After multiple tries, we were able to wire the circumflex and pre-dilation was done. And the circumflex stent was also deployed. But if you can notice right here, there is some staining of contrast uh, happening right here, which was not identified. It happened right here, once again, not identified. And even after the stent was placed, it was not identified. And when we took the final picture, we noticed a complete dissection of the left main LAD and there was no flow into the circumflex branch. Thankfully, we were able to wire the LAD quickly and intravascular ultrasound showed that behind the LAD stent, the dissection was continuing. Here is the LAD uh, true lumen and you can see the dissection plane right here. And and you can see the dissection continuing behind the stent also. And we were able to quickly stent the LAD and we had already stented the circumflex. So we had to do a tap strategy. And get a good final angiographic result. So the learning points in this case were number one, if you're doing a bifurcation lesion, even if it is a 001 lesion, consider wiring both LAD and circumflex branches. Once dissection is noted, minimize contrast injection to prevent propagation of dissection. Definitely consider intravascular imaging. Many bifurcation strategies can be done with a six French axis and familiarity with each one of them is essential. So transradial axis is a safe for simple unprotected left main PCI. 
careful pre-procedure planning should be done. Consider six or seven French sheet or a sheetless eight French guide if anatomy dictates. Consider intravascular imaging for all unprotected left main PCI. 